alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home on Imam Hussain TV with myself Ragad Bakr and our expert life coach and NLP practitioner Fahima Muhammad, who today will be discussing about hijab. Assalamu alaikum Fahima. Alaikum salam. Um, thank you for bringing up such a crucial and delicate subject, which is the hijab. Um, it's something that a lot of women today, especially today and in this country, uh, not so much struggle with but question mm -hmm. and because they have a lot of questions coming towards them as well um, one of uh, the main question I hear is is it a cultural or is it a religious thing mm -hmm. the hijab another question that I always come across is is hijab actually mentioned in the Quran because a lot of people say actually it's not that the hijab itself the one on the head is not mentioned in the Quran it's just mentioned to to dress up in a in a, in a way where you cover your body you cover your chest you're modest mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that um, there is a lack of knowledge and assumption of hijab and remember that the Quran was written um, in the grammar and in the language that we even today do mm -hmm. not have that understanding and the meaning but the correct terminology for hijab is not actually mentioned in the Quran, but hijab, the head covering, is mentioned. But it's the word which is used, which is called the khimar. So that in the Quran is definitely there. So if there's any sort of misunderstanding or, you know, sort of like um, thinking that it actually isn't such a thing and we don't need to have our head covered and it's just the modesty from the neck below or whatever that may be, it's absolutely incorrect because hijab is most definitely mentioned but not in that sort of wording so hijab is something that adds to the khimar meaning that you know you have the akhlaq and at the same time hijab is not just for women it is the physical aspect and the social aspect of how we should behave how we should, you know, uh, be inside and out and not just, you know, um, on the surface of how we wear the hijab. So you're saying hijab is something for us, it's like a barrier for us in terms, not just how we dress, but yes. how we act. Absolutely. And nowadays it is very much seen upon as it's just for women and it's just the appearance on the outside, mm -hmm. but it's much deeper. And that's why there are really misunderstandings and doubts and people that are wearing it don't believe in it but they kind of feel that they're forced to because of society and community and they're not happy and they're not confident and it's a real shame because it's a beautiful piece that represents everything that you know we can stand for in Islam you know and at the same time you know you can really wear it pr proudly there are people that could look differently without hijabs and get scrutinized or get picked on. Mm -hmm. But I know in this day and age and where we're living and with everything that's happening, you know, there are challenges and tests. But in history, Islam has always been challenged and tested mm -hmm. with the religion itself and wearing hijab. But it didn't deter people from following and, you know, conforming to what is said in the Quran and what needs to be. And there's definitely benefits and there's definitely protection and there's definitely even in society <coughs> when we first came as humans, you know, to cover yourselves and to look decent and to look modest and also for people to look at you, not by just from your outward appearances, mm -hmm. even to today's modern world, women complain about that. Yeah. They don't like to be seen in a certain way because the fact that people are looking at them differently, yeah. whether or not they make the effort to or not. So they want to be seen for what they think and, you know, and what do they speak. But obviously the outward appearance is, you know, not correct. So they sometimes find it difficult. Whereas in Islam, when you have hijab, you know, people do view you differently. Yeah. And yes, there's negativity, but there's negativity everywhere. It's, it's quite funny how actually nowadays society looks at hijab as a demoralizing uh, an thing, oppressive an oppressive piece mm -hmm. of thing to wear on your head or garments to wear whereas actually it's very very empowering and what you were saying it's protective because yes. what's going on in the media the past uh, couple mm -hmm. of weeks how women are just so demoralized of because of how they dress and where, yeah. the, where they're working how the males uh, behave towards them um, hijab actually to some extent prevents that prevents this demoralization yeah. of women um, and the and yeah. objectifying women. Yeah, absolutely. But then again, you know, 
we always look on the outward side of things mm. and the outside of things, which is, you know, it's normal, we're human, and that's how we judge. But Islam mm. goes a lot deeper, and it's really there in the Quran for men and women. Mm. And it's not just the outward dress. It's no point even thinking that you're wearing the hijab and you're doing your duty when you don't have the heart and the mind mm. and the way in which you treat people, the way in which you talk, and how you actually behave. So it's actually in the Quran for us all. Hijab is there, khimar is there for mm. us all to cover and to sort of, you know, like you said, have a barrier between what is right and wrong mm. and how to behave. And at the same time, as Muslims, you know, we should be proud of it. We might think as women that there might be some sort of like, um, you know, restriction or there's no certain things that we can and cannot do, but it's the way in which you're taught and brought up with it and how you can work around it. Mm. And at the same time, you know, there are differences in the way people wear hijab and everyone's on their own journey. No one should be judged and even mm. your opinions shouldn't really be given. And you know, and if you are going to give guidance and you do feel there's certain people now not wearing it a certain way, there's a way in which you say it. And everyone's on their own journey. You know, and there's cultural influences on how people wear hijab, which you know, people have an opinion of whether it's right or wrong, or if they're living in the West and it's more westernized and, you know, it's not the proper attire in the way it should be. But, you know, all these things don't give people a hard time. So you're saying that's where culture comes in, in yes. the way the hijab is worn and not the, the actual hijab. Yeah. But that's also because you're looking at it from the outside view. Mm. You know, it doesn't mean even if someone's not wearing the hijab that they don't have the etiquette, they don't have the manners, they don't have the akhlaq. You mm. can't demoralize people for not wearing it either or even taking it off. There are so many people that are being, you know, um, sort of like dismissed in the community if someone takes the hijab off, which actually makes them go further away. Yeah. So that's actually something that we cannot do and we cannot say and only Allah is the judge of us all. Mm. So, you know, to show empathy and to show understanding and to give support for people that are going through what they're going through and find out their reasons if you feel close enough to do that. Mm. And still invite them because people are like, oh, well, they took off the hijab now. We don't want that influence in our house. And if there's a gather, some sort of gathering or whatever it may be, they might not be invited or they might not be looked at and they'll be, you know, seen in a certain way, which even comes across as negative. So obviously they're going to turn further away and thinking that whatever they decided is actually the right way. So, you know, the treatment of people and how you act and behave, regardless of how you think you are, you do not have that right to be in that way. So hijab mm. is more about the inward. You know, it's how you are from the inside first. So don't think just because you're wearing it, you know, you're above it all or you know better. You should still be improving. Islam and being Muslim is not just being, it's becoming more becoming more, you know, sort of educated, becoming more and more religious, becoming more of something that you sort of attain to, mm -hmm. towards. So no one's ever going to be there, even if you're wearing it. So don't judge someone else. For not wearing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, at the same time, the Quran has mentioned in, about hijab yeah. in Surah 24, verse 27. And it's more about social etiquette. So it has been stated in many terms in the Quran regarding, you know, that hijab is more to do with regards to how you are inside. And that has been, you know, over and over again, and it applies to men and women. And the hijab is, you know, I think we as women, it's been given a hard time, but you have to bring it both sides because men as well, you know, wearing certain, you know, clothing and being modern and being up to date, you know, there's also Even restrictions the and the behavior. Absolutely. Mm. So, you know, how you come across is really important. And that is hijab. First and foremost, is that sort of treatment of how you are. Yeah. Well, you know, that that makes a lot of sense, because in actual fact, what does hijab mean? It actually the, the, the actual wording is barrier. So, yes, it is right that for both men and women, um, hijab should be applied. Also, I would like to say that, you know, um, in this day and age, we we have got more sort of like problems with regards to, um, you know, like some places in some countries in Europe, they're banning the hijab, they're banning the niqab, and, you know, we use that as an excuse for us not to practice our religion. 
But at the same time, like I said, you know, history has shown that Islam has always been under some sort of scrutiny with regards to our beliefs and our practices. Mm. And there are certain things that people will use as an excuse to say, I'm not putting the hijab on because I won't get this job or, you know, I won't get this opportunity. But if you actually knew the meaning and if you're doing it in regards to, you know, the love of Allah and the understanding of it, then you actually will go further. Yeah. And maybe that job is not even for you, but actually it might actually be where you actually get it because of that. And whatever happens to tawakkul you know absolutely you say, i'm gonna put this hijab no matter yes. what and allah will give me this job absolutely not this man or this woman and you know we are we can't be blinded to say that yes we can you know we're not gonna maybe face some sort of aggression or any sort of like you know um sort of uh one-to-one -one face off every now and again you mm. know alhamdulillah. Or the odd words the, the odd, odd words yeah. so no we need to sort of make people aware of it as to yeah. you know how to respond how to react yeah. and you yourself if you're wearing the hijab you need to be proud by actually understanding you know why you're wearing it yeah. and when children wear it from a young age it is said that it's recommended from the age of when they become you know um of Bala. age mm -hmm. yes so, you know, for girls beginning sort of like age nine or ten, a lot of people do argue, especially parents, that they're too young and they don't understand. And to a certain extent, that's true. But it's about, you know, just training. like Salah, it's about training and, you know, getting them into a habit. Because it's all of a sudden, if you just want to put it on somebody, then and it's also going to be, girls. yeah, it's going to be difficult. Mm. So it's training. And from a young mind, they're mm. more likely to be influenced by you as well. So there's a lot of reasons around it. Um, and... In psychology, if you want something, you will go out there and you'll look for answers to make it work. But if you're already doubtful, then you're going to find it hard to actually train your child. You're actually going to find it difficult because you yourself don't believe in it. If you're doubtful yourself, yes. how can you bring it to your child? And the way in which you, treat your ch you teach your children how to be you know, observant of hijab and as to love it, it doesn't just start from the age of nine. You know, mm. they follow your pa the parents. You got to take them over. You got to show them, you know, the benefits. You got to tell them stories. You got to be inventive and creative. Like, you know, if they're really young, you know, if there was a sweet on the floor, would you pick it up if it was, for example, wrapped, covered, or open? You know, things like that. You can be creative. You can make things yeah. up to make them understand. You know, the mm. most important and the you know the most expensive jewel is protected and it's covered. And you know, cover. things like that. Yeah, and uh, I remember when we were growing up, we were told like fruits, uh, yes. natural fruits, were all were, were all came in in a shell or a yes. cover. Uh, protection for protection and as yeah. soon as you do remove that cover after a while it will, it will rot yeah. it will change kind yes. that's another example yeah so you need to be uh, to make the girl understand because a lot of girls they don't understand they don't why understand. am i wearing this why are they covering me up is it you know is there something wrong with me yeah a lot of girls would have that question but when you explain to them how precious mm -hmm. they are and that's why they should be covered um, it, it's, it's actually a beautiful thing yes, it's a very empowering absolutely thing. and you're building confidence within that person mm other than just how they look on the outside. Yeah, yeah. It's so much more that hijab gives you if it's taught mm. in a particular way. And then the, the other aspect is when you have maybe, maybe the older generation or maybe even, you know, this generation where they might scare children and say that, you know, Allah's going to, you know, you know, burn your hair and, you know, you, you hear things yeah, like this. How if you don't pray your salah and mm. if you don't do it right, it's not accepted and Allah doesn't. No one has that right to say that. Only Allah can judge. You can only guide in a good way and you don't scare children. That's why people are turning. And when they're young, you teach them how to wear hijab by practice and by being inventive with these stories. But as they grow up, they're going to be changing and they're going to be facing different challenges and tests while wearing the hijab. So you don't stop because their mind is developing and their questions are a lot more deeper and meaningful. So don't think just because they put it on at the age of nine, you've got to leave them. That's when you don't you know, you, gotta, you don't leave them. Mm -hmm. You continue at every stage they're at to reassure them that actually what they're doing, especially when they become teenagers, like 13 and then going into high school, and then they might feel restrictive and they might feel that they can't do certain things, but you can work around it. I think the most problem isn't actually in high school or um, school itself. It's mainly when they start to look for jobs and work. Um, and naturally, a lot of times you are going to be re rejected whether you wear hijab or not. And people like to find reason why they're being yes. rejected. So they will say, oh, it's probably because I'm wearing this hijab, so I'll take it off. And I think that's the most challenging time, yes. isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, everyone wants to conform and they want to put themselves in boxes and they want to also be part of certain societies and certain cliques. Mm. So obviously, if you think like that, then you're going to follow in a certain way. But if you want to be individual and you want to represent your values and your beliefs, 
then that's where the difference come in and that's when you can be strong in mm. whatever you choose to do and the right path will actually be there for you you know so at the same time we might have these problems in society but with your complete understanding and belief you can really go much further than you think mm. so don't make excuses and in coaching you know if a child feels like that or if you feel that there is sort of like you know doubts about certain things you question because most of the time it's generalization and it's not really that bad mm. so you can actually wear hijab you can be proud of it but it needs to be you know taught properly it needs to be understood properly so that you can actually you know progress and learn through the stages and phases in life and be confident to wear it. Thank you so much, Fahima. We are coming towards the end of the first part of the show. And as we always do, uh, in the second half of the show, we'll be taking some of your questions to Fahima, inshallah, regarding hijab. Uh, we'll be back soon. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Making a House a Home with myself Ragad Baqir and Fahima Mohammed who uh, we have some questions for you. Okay. Uh, the first question is from Ferdos um, and she asks how do I influence my daughter to wear hijab? Yeah I mean like we sort of touched on that a little bit earlier um, mm. it, does, it doesn't matter what stage or what age that you feel that your daughter needs to wear the hijab and I don't know particularly what stage this is at but it's about you know you yourself loving hijab you need to understand why is it that you're wearing it because you know people follow what it is that they love and you become a role model and you can only do that with full belief of what it represents what does it mean what are the opportunities what are the benefits you know how beautiful it really is because you know in society today we we sort of like look at certain you know images and we think that's it that's how we got to look mm. that's how we got to be and as growing girls and teenagers you know it is actually quite testing especially now to you know look a certain way and be a certain way and wearing the hijab might seem restricting and it might seem like you know you can't show yourself the way it needs to be so it's the all it's all to do with your perception and your belief and in order to really influence your child, you really have to be close enough to them to sort of create those habits from a very young age. Mm. And like I said before, throughout their stages, you have to constantly reinforce it so that whatever they're going through, whatever they're facing, whether it's school or college, university or work, that, you know, whatever problems they might be facing and challenges, that you can address it to say, well, actually, you know, there are people out there without hijab and they're mm. facing just the same problems or just the same challenges but you know you're going in there facing it you know being yourself mm. representing who you are and what you believe in even though that doesn't you know involve you you know personally to sort of you know enforce that on anyone else but you out there confidence mm -hmm. you know to be an individual so you need to build you know characters and virtues within those children to be, you know, proud of wearing hijab. Mm. And the only way you can do that is to sort of like understand it yourself. Because a lot of the time it's like, it's written, it's society, it's culture, this is what you have to do, you'll be burnt if you don't, yeah. or, you know, it's not look, it's not right, it's ebb, you know, <laughs> respect, all of these things. Yeah, it doesn't a, work that it's way. It's a shame that um, a lot of parents don't have that awareness. They don't and have the tools. As you mentioned earlier, they, they uh, mentioned things such as uh, adab mm. and going to hell and it's haram not to, um, whereas they can go around the other direction and say that it's, it's the best thing for you. And yes. um, just try and implement pride in the yes. hijab. Try and implement confidence. When you're wearing the hijab, uh, make your daughter feel confident that she's wearing it. Absolutely. So that the slightest word or the slightest comment isn't going to shake her, as they say. Yeah, mm. and you know, if there are any sort of like doubts, you know, you need to question them. What mm. are the doubts? Because a lot of it is generalized. And a lot of it is put, you know, so widely that it, it isn't really a problem. Mm. So it's not about just giving information to your children. It's about trying to see what is their doubts about wearing hijab mm. and getting the real answers then. Yeah, that's great. Um, I have another question from Huda. And she asks, my friend took off her hijab and it upsets me. How do I deal with this? 
and how do I continue our friendship? You know, friendships and relationships are something which should always be there in good and bad times, in challenging and testing times. And what you are, you can't enforce on anyone else. And everyone's going through their own journey with their own sort of like experiences. And to be a real good friend, you do not judge and you do not have the opinions. And if, you, if you're close enough, you can maybe, you know, give some guidance, but only if it's, you know, required and if it's said in the right way. And just be understanding and compassionate and don't push that person away. And yes, it can be upsetting, because, but, you know, you have that understanding, it seems, where, you know, you're proud of your hijab and you love it and you probably won't take it off. But, you know, mm. everyone's going through their own tests and, you know, you can be that person that can bring them back. So don't lose hope and don't be judgmental and don't be sad you know be lucky that you actually have a friend that is going through that and you're next to them mm. to go through that journey with them so that you know they're not going to be lost completely hopefully and it's not even a loss that's not even a good way to say they're going through their own stages in life you know and there's probably not much understanding or knowledge or they just Confidence. also there's you know we go through mm. stages in life where we don't have that faith which is really strong mm. you can't go around walking with constant tawakkul and constant belief and constant you know and the being consistent faith, isn't no it? it doesn't work that way yeah. we go up and down and some people take yeah. it to levels that you and i may not but you have to be understanding you know you have to sort of question like well, what can i do to help you know or what is it that you're going through it's all questioning it's mm. all understanding and being compassionate mm. and support as and well. supporting maybe Absolutely. she's going like you said she's going through something yeah and supporting her through it and maybe she'll come out the other side Absolutely. and uh, have the iman and want to put it back and on. it takes time and it mm. actually takes a lot of guts to actually even take it off mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know because there must be something really strong or mm. something that's lacking or something you know whatever it may be so it's 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 very deep and I think it's very easy to just dismiss it and to just like, you know, give your opinion and you know something and the other person doesn't and then you want to step away or you want to make a point that it's not right. But there's a way in which you do it and if she's a friend, then if anything, you need to stand by her, you know, even more so at this time. Mm. Thanks a lot. Um, I have a question from Sarah. Um, I find wearing hijab really challenging and restrictive. What can I do about that? Well, you need to question, like as a coach, you know, we are trained and you need to sort of like, you know, when people say it's challenging and, and it's restrictive, I will go deep and find out what exactly is the challenge? What exactly are you being restricted, mm. you know, from? Because a lot of the time as humans, you know, when you study human behavior, human way of thinking, and, you know, we generalize, we distort and we delete information in our heads. And that can, you know, when we have those thoughts and we have those judgments within ourselves and the stories that we tell ourselves, we can act upon it in a way that can, you know, have an adverse effect on our actions. So, first of all, you know, if you need to question yourself, what exactly is my challenge? Mm -hmm. Can it be overcome? Because if it's a challenge, it can mm -hmm. definitely be overcome. Yeah. Okay. What is being restricting? You know, what is that, you know, sort of thing that's holding back? You know, well, yeah. is it in work? Is it in exactly. friendships, relationships? Of course. And what yeah. are the alternatives? Because mm. there's always alternatives. It's just that we say, oh, it's really difficult, so I'm not going to do it. Because at the end of the day, that's subconsciously we don't want to do it anyway. And we're just looking for an excuse. So in order to sit down and analyze this, you know, is it really the hijab or is it something else? Because other people wearing hijab or not can go through the same issues as you. Mm. But we use certain things as an excuse for us, you know, but hijab doesn't hinder us at all. Yeah. And there's many people that are athletes. There are as many people around the world now that are doing things that they haven't done before mm. wearing hijab. Doctors, surgeons. Absolutely. Athletes. athletes. It's, it's not hindering. Yeah, it, it's not hindering. Yeah. So if you want to use an excuse, you can use whatever excuse you want. And if you want to make it something that is a positive, it's how you look at it. But question mm. yourself about it and be aware of the benefits of it and be patient. Yes. Be patient that the answers are not all going to come to you, 
But if you, you know, you know that this is what you need to do and you're doing it with the love of Allah and you're doing it for the love of your religion, you're doing it because you know that's what you want to represent, even through those struggling times, if it's not that, it'll be something else, but it'd rather be this because you're not going to, you know, basically be in a way where you're going to compromise, you know, whatever it is that you feel that, you know, you know that is right, then you will continue. Mm. So life is very testing and life is very restricting and challenging being women, being under, you know, ethnic minority. But you know what? We complain a lot and we make excuses, but actually, you know, living in London, living in, in Europe, even, you know, especially in London, we are very blessed we yeah. might have people that are around the world that are complaining for sharia law but actually i think england's already got that but yeah. they don't see it yeah we have equal rights they look after everyone no matter what you go to certain so-called islamic countries they won't even look mm -hmm. at you unless you're from that country they won't give you the benefits unless you're from there you go talking in the street you go speak you want to have a march they will not allow you. It's not even if you're not from that country, but you need to be from a certain class. Yeah, and lots of Arabic, con Arabic countries or even Muslim countries, they don't they have will that. look down upon yes. people that are wearing hijab because they're considered as the second class. Yes, um, I've, I've seen it a lot. Yeah, so it's, it's not really an excuse that you're in the UK um, and that hijab is making you feel restricted. You have your rights. Uh, maybe there's something wrong with that workplace in particular. Yeah. I don't think it's something to do with, with with where we live. Maybe you need to change the workplace rather than change yourself for the workplace. If it's what she's talking about yeah i mean even in workplaces it's also about education yeah you know <coughs> people don't understand it and they might have a view which is like at first might be you know where it's you know it's not very nice but then you can change that view. Yeah. you can make yeah. that difference yeah. you know by being proud of who you are talking about what you do being normal you know in front maybe there might be you know certain dinner stereotypes things. Um, that are going on in, in, in workplaces or in mm -hmm. <coughs> society itself but once they they uh start to talk to you once they start to understand you you can break down those stereotypes Absolutely. you can be the yes. person who does do that yeah mm -hmm. so you know question yourself don't just say that this is you know what it is and that's how it goes because we you know as humans we have a habit of just you know going with making excuses and then you know giving ourselves you know a reason for doing something that actually in the back of my mind this is what I want, I want to do anyway or you know or you are scared or you're just not confident but if you actually question yourself and if you have, the, you know, the ability to sort of, you know, in, in coaching, for example, it's called sort of like, um, you know, you will actually broaden the question to make it bigger because it's not a big deal mm -hmm. or you will narrow it. So, you know, there are certain tools and strategies that could help if you were to talk to somebody who is professional about any challenge in life. And they will bring you to a stage where you'll realize, well, it's not that bad and I can, you know, I can choose a different um, you know, an idea, and it's all to do with your head, the way in which you think, the way in which you perceive things, mm -hmm. and there's alternatives. But we are very narrow-minded, we conform, we say, no, it's this way, it shouldn't be that way. As soon as someone tells us something, we do not question it because we feel, okay, that's the excuse. Now we can just, you know, carry on the way we feel we've always wanted to do in the first place. Mm -hmm. There's so many reasons behind that. So, again, just be confident that, inshallah, you know, if you're wearing hijab, it is, it is testing, it's challenging. It's more obviously on the women than it is for men. But at the same time, you are only going to benefit and there's only blessing in it and you will get further. Inshallah, inshallah. Yeah, and um, who better to please uh, than Allah? <coughs> Sometimes when you take off your hijab, you want to please your boss mm -hmm. <coughs> or your friends. Um, but ultimately, we just want to please Allah in this, in this world. Yeah, there yeah. is definitely, you know, understanding there that we have to know our purpose for being here. And whatever we do does lay the path ahead of us. So whatever challenges you face, you know, just push through it and try and be, you know, a little bit more grateful for where you are, what you're doing. And it only opens you up to grow and evolve to something a lot more stronger and increase your iman in that way. Inshallah. Read more. And inshallah, you know, whatever challenges you have, it will only get easier over time. Inshallah. Okay, I have a question from Muna. Um, and she asks, is hijab mentioned in the Quran? Um, we touched on that earlier. Yeah, um, like I said, you know, we need to understand the language of the Quran. And today we call hijab, but obviously it's mentioned as khimar, as the head covering. So definitely, you know, um, there is a head covering that is recommended and that's definitely obligatory 
in the Quran for women, for women to dress in a particular way. And, you know, hijab is the social aspect as well as the physical aspect of things, and it's for everyone. So if you want to not wear the hijab and if you put any reasons, if you feel you want to not, you know, put it on or whatever it may be, you have your reasons for it, but don't say because it's not written in the Quran. You know, don't say because I don't believe in it because it's not written anywhere. That is completely incorrect. We have to know the meaning. And if you don't know and if you want to double check, go to the marja, go to wherever sources that you might feel and they will, you know, reinforce that it is definitely there. So don't use that as an excuse that, oh, I don't believe in it, I don't really feel it, I don't understand that, you know, it's not written anywhere. Mm. We ourselves, we cannot go to a doctor and say, oh, we don't understand what you're doing. They've, you know, studied for years, so we trust that. So that's why, you know, where the maraja come in, and we need to trust what is being said. We need to go to certain ple people that we can, you know, really believe that they've given us this information mm. because it's definitely correct and it definitely exists. So whatever reasons you might feel that you don't want to wear it or you might think that it's cultural, it's not cultural. It is religious and there's definitely reasons and benefits to wearing it that are written in the Quran. Yeah, <coughs> as I always mention, there's nothing in the Quran that's written for us if it's not for a reason and if it's not for our own benefits. And that's what we always have to remember. Oh, yes. I think that's a, a good way to end uh, today's show. Um, and inshallah, we have been able to benefit you um, in as much as we can. And uh, we really appreciate all your questions. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll be back next week, inshallah, with more topics. Thank you. If you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode, please contact your local GP or Fahima Muhammad on coachfm1 at hotmail.com.